Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk on CI/CD using Screwdriver. So, those of you who don't know, Screwdriver is an open source build platform. It's designed for continuous delivery, and Screwdriver is built on top of technologies like Kubernetes, Docker, Node.js, Golang. Um, a brief usage stats: within Verizon Media, we run over 30,000 daily builds. And we have over 30,000 projects, which spans use cases from mobile, iOS, uh, Android, Node.js, Golang, you name it, we have it. Uh, footprint, we have over five different build clusters. And uh, history-wise, this is a project which started in 2011. It started as an internal project for orchestrating Jenkins, right? So uh, we wanted to give developers a way that they can easily create pipelines or projects in Jenkins. And 2016, uh, by the time, by 2016, we open sourced it. And by the time it went through multiple iterations, and the version we open sourced is a Scudover V4, which we did a totally complete redesign in top of architecture. Uh, what that means is, this is where Screwdriver fits in with your daily habits, as in daily habits of a developer. If you look at a developer lifecycle, you write some code, then you create a pull request, then you start a pull request workflow, make sure that whatever code you wrote is uh, of quality. Then if it looks good, you match the code and you start a production workflow. So it looks like you build, you run your test using Selenium or Cucumber.js, and if it all looks good, you publish your artifacts, then it gets deployed to your data centers. So commit, test, release. This is the developer li life cycle where Screwdriver fits in. Right? And in terms of Screwdriver, how that looks like is this. We believe in something called pipeline as a code. So your build workflow, you describe in simple YAML configuration. right? If you look at the code, uh, on your left side, that describes two jobs. One is build, and second is publish. In the build, what you are saying is run this job uh, on, sorry. Run this job whenever there is a pull request or there is a commit, right? And the next line says run this job using a Node.js container. In this case, I'm saying use Node.js version 10. Then you define pretty much a bunch of your build steps. If, if you are using Node, you pretty much do Node.js npm install, then run bunch of npm scripts. It can be test, build, publish. And the second job, you define a dependency with the first job. So that's what being represented on the left side. Like the build job is successful, then run the second job. So this way, you can create interconnected bunch of jobs in a single workflow, which we call pipeline. And Screwdriver is designed in terms of pluggability. What that means is, as a cluster admin, you have the option to choose what database you can use and what build executor you can use. Right? So uh, you might be begin to Postgres, or you might be begin to MariaDB. And your storage can be, it can, be, it can leverage AWS S3, or it can be disk-based storage. And you are, in terms of execution, it can run on Jenkins, it can run on Docker, or it can run in Kubernetes. So you can totally customize it depending on what your organization's needs. And if you want to set up screwdriver at scale, uh, how, what we expose is, is we expose a Helm chart where you can take screwdriver as an application and install it in your Kubernetes cluster. And for those of you who are interested in playing around with Screwdriver, we have something called Screwdriver in a Box. And it uses Docker and Docker Compose to build up all the components of Screwdriver and where you can play around in your local, uh, local MacBook. So how Screwdriver in a Box looks like is this. You, uh, screwdriver.cd, this is the one, one shop stop for all things Screwdriver. It has a link to our user guide. It has a link to our blog. But whenever we do uh, new feature announcements, we tend to publish a blog post. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can see a lot of announcements related to awesome features we release. And to try it out locally, this is what SD in a box looks like. It's a one-line Python script 
You just run this, and that will bring screwdriver up and running in your local machine. And containerized builds. So what we believe in is, is these are all throwaway builds. You, you run your build, it runs your tests, and each time you bring up a new build container. So your builds are pretty much running in as a container. Right? So as if you recall in the previous configuration for your job, one of the fields you provide is a build image. So it can be a Node.js based image, it can be a Java based image, Ubuntu, uh, CentOS. It can totally be used as per, or it, or it could be something uh, which you publish on your own, uh, which you built on top of maybe Node.js. So you might need Java, you might need uh, Node as part of one single container. So you can totally build your own Docker container and use that for your builds. Now, on a higher level, this is how your workflow will look like. So you start as a user, you interact with Screwdriver in two ways. One is your source control management system, which can be GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. And second is you come to Screwdriver or create a project. And in either ways, the change will start a build process, which will be handled by the Screwdriver API engine. And uh, the engine, just a bunch of, bunch of things based on your build configuration. Uh, we will shortly see a live demo on how all this flow looks like. So in a nutshell, the, the API will start a build, the, and it will parse your screwdriver config and runs your build steps. And it does a bunch of things. It publishes your artifacts, and it also publishes your logs, depending on how the cl screwdriver cluster admin has configured the services. Right. And once a build is done, the screwdriver also looks like, OK, are there other jobs to run? And it will execute the whole workflow. Now, since screwdriver is open source, we have an open source instance available at cd.screwdriver.cd. So if you want to play around and get a look and feel of screwdriver, you can just visit cd.screwdriver.cd. And if you are not signed in, this is the view you will get. So Scodever has this notion of signing in through your source control management system. Right? So in this case, it has this uh, option to sign in through GitHub, or you can sign in as a guest. So our all uh, public users who want to play around and get a look and feel of Scodever, we will use the guest access. So if you just click the guest access, then you are logged in as a guest. And you have a read-only view of Screwdriver. You can browse around, uh, search, find pipelines. So, this, uh, and so these are the pipelines starting with Screwdriver.cd. You click on one of them, and you can see how the pipeline page looks like. Now, uh, the bunch of features which what makes Screwdriver is one of the most important features is our workflow. Right? So you can run parallel builds. You can do rollback builds. You can do external triggers, uh, periodic jobs if you want to run it on a timer based, or if you want to put execution constraints like freeze windows, block by. So uh, does anyone of you here maintain a build pipeline for your projects? Those of you run, uh, OK, we have a couple of show of hands. Right, so, um, so, so one of the things which, uh, which went into the design process for Screwdriver was provide a powerful workflow engine on how you can orchestrate your builds. Like you start from a single code commit, then you start one job, or you run mul multiple jobs in parallel. You might want to run your test against, say, Node.js version uh, 8 or version 10, run these jobs in parallel. And if they all look good, then converge them together at one single point. Do your production, uh, do your deployment to your QA environment, or run test cases against your QA environment. If that looks good, then uh, do your deployment against your production environment. All right. So workflow is something which was always very uh, important for Screwdriver. We will see some live demos on how this looks like. So let me go to an example project I have. So this is how uh, your journey with Screwdriver starts. Like you have a GitHub repository, and you ha you should have a file called the Screwdriver.yaml, and it is in this YAML file you define your jobs. 
and the dependencies between them. So uh, we will see how this looks in the SCUDAVA UI first before we dig deeper into what the YAML configs are. So all you need is just grab the URL for your Git repository, come to screwdriver, and I can't do that on a guest mode because it guests don't have write access. Right? So now I need to switch to my GitHub login. So behind the scenes, it's logging me into uh, my GitHub account. So the topmost corner now changed. Now it shows my GitHub user. Now you just provide your URL for your uh, Git repository. And you just click Create the Pipeline. So behind the scenes, Screwdriver engine is connecting to a Git repository, uh, authenticates you, and reads the screwdriver.yaml file. So right now, this is a blank slate. No, no pipeline has run. At the very top, you will see your repository and links to GitHub. Now, on the right side, you will see two tabs. One is the events, and second is the pull request. So right now, you have a blank slate, so you are, you are not seeing anything, right? Now, uh, let me click the Start button. So when you click the Start button, the screwdriver engine is going to start your build process. So there are two ways this can happen. One is you coming to the UI and manually interacting here, clicking the Start button, or you go to your Git repository and make a code change. So how that looks like is going to be this. Let me just edit the readme file. Um, so I'm going to make a change here and just say test. And for the sake of it, I'm going to create a new branch and create a pull request against this branch. Right? So I'm going to propose this file change. Um, it says update readme and say create this pull request. OK, so now I have a pull request against my same repository from a different branch. Now, how Screwdriver understands this is, uh, let's give it a couple of seconds so that it can receive the webhook. Yeah, so if you see the pull request, Screwdriver automatically detected that there is a pull request against your Git repository, right? And it started the, the, the test job. Now, if you go back to the events, which started because I clicked uh, the Start button. So this pipeline is already progressed a lot. It, ran the main job. Then it ran two jobs in parallel, like build node 10 and build node 8. And once these two jobs are completed, then it runs a deploy stage job. And right now, it's waiting in queue. Uh, it, it, it's just detecting that the two jobs have finished, and it's waiting for this to be started. Right. So now let's go back to the pull request one. And let me click on the main one. It's already completed execution, so it took uh, about 30 seconds to finish. You, uh, it shows some important stats on the header, like what's the job name, what's the commit SHA, and what's the pull request, uh, what user triggered it. And if you have configured your code coverage details, it uh, displays that here. So right now, it. it doesn't do much. It just runs two steps. One is your install. It's nothing doing nothing except a npm install. So you'll see all the logs here. And it also runs an npm test. I just have one uh, mock test, which is just a dummy test. So you will see uh, it, it uses Mocha for running, uh, just displays the test results. right? And if I go back to the pipeline, oh, the deploy stage has completed. So now you see that the green, it, it shows its success. Right? So this is a typical workflow with a screwdriver. Right? Now let's go back to the pull request. Now I see that, OK, my job has passed. Now uh, somebody can go and review this code. OK, um, everything looks good. And say, oh, I can't approve my own, but uh, I can merge it. <laughs> right? So I just merge the pull request. Right? Now, Screwdriver is going to, let's see what Screwdriver is going to come up with. If I go back to the event, right, so it detected that, okay, there is a new commit. So it started your production workflow. So it says that, okay, there is a pull request, one was merged, so I'm starting the whole pipeline. Now, uh, you have a couple of options to interact with this uh, graph. Like on the left side, you can select a past one and see what's the previous state of your pipeline. 
right? You just uh, click on any of these links on the left, on, the, on your right side. Uh, click one, see, okay, this is the current running one. You click on the, you interact with the graph, you can see a bunch more actions. You can go to the build details, or you can stop the build, or you can also start a pipeline from here. So what that means is, say for some reason your deploy failed, because pipelines can be flaky, uh, things beyond your control. Uh, you, it could be something with the network, or there is a flaky test, and most, most times uh, in these situations, you just re retry your build so that uh, whatever flakiness is gone, right? So in this case, I can just uh, say click on any of these nodes and say start my pipeline from here. And what Screwdriver will does is it takes the same context, like what's a, what's a shard at that point, or what's the metadata which was created at that point, establishes the same execution context and reruns your project. So this is a powerful way where you can stitch together uh, rollback workflows. Right? So you deployed some code to the production and you realize, oh, oops, something went wrong. Now I need to roll it back. Right? So you can stitch together such workflows using uh, what we call the detached jobs. Right? Uh, now in this case, this, uh, this is in queue, so it's still waiting. Uh, let's look at the previous one which started because of the merge. So it finished the build once, now it's deploying to stage. By the way, these are all just uh, dummy steps, so it's not really deploying to stage, it's just uh, doing something dummy. Um, now another uh, way to interact with this, if you want to see the metrics, right? So how do you know what's the health of your pipeline? Like how, uh, determining how it's behaving over time. So we have this uh, cool feature called the build metrics. So you go to the build metrics. Right now, there is nothing much. We have a few, this is a relatively newer one, so it doesn't have much data. But let's go to one pipeline, which uh, it's been around for a while. So, so we use Screwdriver to build Screwdriver. Right? So what that means is uh, all our UI, the API, they are built using Screwdriver itself. So this is a pipeline for building the Screwdriver UI. Right, so any changes we make to a UI code base, which is an Ember.js based project, it's built using this Codeva pipeline. So this is a real world example where you start with a commit, uh, it runs a main job, which uh, does npm install, uh, runs some test cases. If that looks good, then it publishes it. So we, pu we do two publishing. One is we publish to uh, uh, N uh, npm as a node module, and also we publish a Docker container wherein if you just want to run the Scudaba UI, you just simply grab the Docker image for the Scudaba UI, right? So we publish that, then it deploys against our beta environment, right? So it does a deployment, that's what this job does. It grabs the data from Docker Hub, deploys a new version, runs test against it, and if that looks good, you deploy it to your production environment. So the test can be anything. It's, it can be based on your favorite choice of test tool. Uh, it can be uh, plain Cucumber, uh, or it can be based on source labs. So, and, uh, uh, so let's look at the metrics for this pipeline. So if I select about three months, then you see a lot more interesting data, like how your, how your builds are behaving over time. Right? So it, show, it exposes three graphs. So one is your events, based on all the your workflow which started based off a commit. So you can get an idea from the height, like what's overall time it's taking, right? And uh, if you want to view only successfully jobs, because the failures can be outliers, it can be network timeouts, or something which went drastically wrong with your infrastructure. So if you just want to look at only the success jobs and see how it's behaving over time, uh, this is a great way to view. You can click interact with this graph. You can zoom in to a specific section to know what happened in that window of time. Uh, it changes these two graphs. So these two graphs are pretty much the same. Uh, it's an event, and this is a mirror image of it. But it shows the splits on what happened at each job level. Right? So in this case, I had the main published beta and pro jobs. This says how much time it's spending on each of these jobs. Right? And if I click on, uh, and these are deep linked to the specific job, so you can go back for a specific build for that job and 
see what happened, how much time it took. Um, oh, this is a case where we have the test case coverage. Right? So it's a case we have 71% coverage, not great, but we still have some coverage. And if you, the, the way we expose this is we have this notion of microservices. The screwdriver by itself doesn't try to do everything. We are a platform, and what we do best is orchestrating your build workflow. So for use cases like your test, uh, test coverage, your uh, test number of tests, right now we are leveraging on Sonacube. So if you click on this, that will take us to the hosted Sonacube instance we have. Let me say just log in with GitHub. Um, you see more details on the coverage uh, details within Sonacube. So those of you who are familiar with Sonacube, Sonacube is a static code analysis tool. Uh, it can do much more than showing the test, uh, test coverage number. It can uh, show uh, vulnerabilities, code smells. It, uh, it has support for a lot of programming languages, not just being just one of them. Um, and if you want to do more analysis on how a specific job is behaving, you can leverage the last one. So you come and say, OK, let me click the main job and see what's happening with that. So now the view changed. So now you can see what are the specific steps in a job is doing, like how much time you are spending on an each specific step. And you can even select one step uh, using this only feature and see how much time it's taking. So it could be that this step is inefficient and you want to do some optimizations, right? But this is a great way to analyze deeper into what's happening. So uh, coming back to the pipeline, um, Okay, so we were here. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. So coming back to the pipeline, uh, so we have a few more uh, features available within the UI. Uh, we have native secret management support. So if you want, if you have some tokens which you need to expose, uh, you can make use of the secrets, uh, to store it, and they will be available in the build as some Norman variables. Right, uh, and if you want to disable certain jobs, you can make use of the options UI. Uh, and worst case, if you just want to get rid of it, you can interact with the options UI to just nuke everything. So this is in a nutshell on what Scodeva can do for you. We have much more features like managing monorepos. How do you do branch filtering, uh, build cache, build analysis. Uh, and the best part is the templates and commands. So that's what makes the heart of Screwdriver. That's where you build integrations, like products with source labs, uh, or if you want to do deploy use deployment tools like Spinnaker, Tecton, this is where uh, the, in the integrations comes in. Uh, so right now, if I quickly look at the UI, you have a bunch of templates available. Uh, so templates are like shared steps which you can use in your workflow. So if you go to one specific template, these are uh, a bunch of steps. So, so these are free for you to browse around within the Scodeva UI. Uh, we have a bunch of templates from Python, because uh, we have a very cool Python developer uh, with uh, Verizon Media, Divide. Um, but there are a lot of other example pipelines here. So we spoke about build metrics. And these are some useful links. Um, the home page of a user guide, uh, example cluster, and yeah, Scodever is open source. So if you like some feature or if you want to extend it, this is a great way uh, you can start contributing. And we are on Slack, Scodever CD. So if you want to start using or if you have any questions, this is a great way to reach out to the team. Um, and that's it. Any questions? Who has questions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guess which problem was the genesis of screwdriver that wasn't solved by any existing solutions? So when we started off uh, our CI CD journey within Yahoo, I think that was in 2011. The, during that time, it was uh, Hudson. Jenkins was not even in the picture, so it, uh, we started off with Hudson. At that point, each team was using maintaining their own Hudson environment, right? 
And soon you will run into a case that, okay, some of them are maintained, some of them are not maintained, older version, security holes, and you have to keep patching them. So everyone was doing, or each team was doing pretty much solving the same problem. So it started off with a movement for centralized build farms, where you, so you don't have hundreds of Jenkins instances running in your organization. Right? So you have one instance where you can come and create your project. But then it became like you are interacting with the UI a lot. Right? Everyone is doing the same thing. If you have a Node.js project, uh, and chances are that you handle everything using your package.json, you put your build scripts. But as far as your build is doing, it's pretty much reading from the script, uh, running the same NPM scripts. Right? Now, uh, then it became so tedious for everyone to go and configure the same project using the same thing. That is where the idea started that, okay, you can orchestrate all this with a simple config file. Let's say like screwdriver.yaml. So you just throw in the file, then screwdriver understands, parses everything, creates all the Jenkins jobs and projects for you. So you don't have to do this manual configuration. Now, now it becomes how you share this. So, so you have a lot of knowledge lying around with different pockets of your organization. Right? So you have a lot of subject matter experts in uh, Node.js, uh, Java. How do you bring all these people together that they establish, okay, this is how you do Java development, or this is how you do Node.js development. Now it becomes like you have all these uh, subject matter experts who can say, okay, this is, this, is how you, this is a template on how you build your Java project. How do you expose all those uh, knowledge? So that is how Screwdriver kind of started. Right, so uh, in initial versions from V1 to V3, we had this notion of platforms, which was uh, similar to the templates, but more locked in and more tedious ways to develop. Now, all these initial versions of version one to three, they were meant to orchestrate Jenkins, right? Uh, uh, so you, you have this could have a config, you take that, create all these Jenkins jobs. But soon we, was, we were running at a scale that uh, it was not scaling up. We had to do multiple masters, uh, separate out the masters for pull request, uh, for mobile uh, soon, and even the features we wanted, we, we were doing more and more within Scrooge API layer. Right? Soon uh, it reached a point that Jenkins was not scaling up, and the kind of uh, workflow we wanted to do, uh, which our users were demanding, that was not being met. So then we started looking out uh, what's, what's next, how do we extend this. And this, we did the open source in 2016. At that time, there was not a uh, lot of the cool tools we have available right now. They were, not, uh, they were not ready or they were not prime time. But our developers were demanding it, and they were building applications at a scale that uh, uh, th ten thousands of builds a day. And that's how Scodeva was born. And we were looking at solutions beyond Jenkins, and it was during that time containers were getting hot and Kubernetes was coming up. So we totally reimagined a build platform where your builds are pretty much short-lived containers. So you uh, run your build as a container, then throw it away at the end of it. Right? So, and, uh, so then all you need to scale is how a powerful Kubernetes cluster, which can handle hundreds of or thousands of requests, bring up your ports, throw them away. So that's pretty much our uh, journey to what's good or what it is right now. So uh, <clears throat> Kubernetes is only solving your slave problem. It's mm -hmm. how are you solving the master problem? Because if you're going to put artifact or a giant database behind your master, you can do the same thing with Jenkins. So at that, so the, one of the main problems with Jenkins was uh, single master was not scaling up, right? So with the, with our new workflow, we have this code of our API, and that can be scaled up to a number of ports. And that is running on uh, your data centers. It's, it, it, the code itself runs in Kubernetes. So all our uh, UI, API, our store, all these components are running in Kubernetes. So we can scale them up or down based on our demand. And uh, or this API is what listens to your webhook events. API is what processes your, if you click, you go to the UI, start your pipeline manually. That's all handled through the API layer. Anyone else? Oh, we got one over here. Uh, 
Uh, so just one question about uh, some of the challenges which we are facing and probably you guys might have solved or you might be facing still. So uh, let's say if I trigger a build on screwdriver and it's running some tests. Now, uh, given the build, it might take one hour, two hours, three hours to finish probably. Uh, might not even finish the hang up in between. So uh, for those kind of long running builds, uh, like first question is, face such challenges and if yes then uh, like what were they and how were they solved so uh, we used to have this a uh, lot of monolithic builds where we have we used to have builds which ran even more than three hours like some of them if you have huge deployments uh, like for example uh, mail and all like they are deploying up to ten thousands of servers right so we used to have the cases where it can take more than eight hours sometimes uh, so screwdriver provides you a lot of execution constraints, right? So you can split your jobs uh, or split your this whole process into multiple jobs so that each job uh, can be like a couple of hours. And you can also set your time out for each job. Like by default, we run 90 minutes, but you can extend them as uh, high as like 12 hours, right? So then, the, but the obvious real solution is actually to refactor the stuff so that it doesn't take three hours. Uh, split them into manageable chunks so that uh, so it's it's a development discipline which you have to enforce but at the same time we don't make any decisions on users behalf so it's up to the user to say okay my bill can take four hours so let me run for four hours so we run it for four hours so it's entirely up to the user to say how much my how how, how should i architect my um, test solutions Uh, so the build runs for more time, for example, right? As you mentioned that we cannot enforce users to uh, follow the constraints, uh, even though they should. Uh, so in that case, uh, like what are the resource constraints or, or, the, or the technical challenges which uh, is faced by the platform itself? Uh, like will it hog resources which, were, which the build was not supposed to hog or uh, do you run into other issues like timeouts uh, for other builds? So uh, that's a good question on resource constraints. So by default, all these builds get a base set of resources that is entirely configurable by your cluster admin. But builds can relax that constraints. So you can say, OK, I want four CPU units. Because these are running on Kubernetes, you can specifically ask for, OK, give me four CPUs, or uh, give me five CPUs, or give me eight GB, give me 12 GB. So w whatever the build asks for it, it's given up front. And the beauty of Kubernetes is it takes care of all the scheduling aspects of it. Right? Cool. We have time for one more? You okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Do we have yeah, another I, question? I can, I can take questions offline. And uh, we are on Slack. If you want to know more about the product itself, our, our team hangs, hangs around in that Slack I shared earlier, Scudaver that CD. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, that was my question. You read my mind. Let's all clap for Jithin. Yes. Yeah. Round of applause. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you to Aaron as well for tonight's presentation. We are breaking for networking. Let's call it. It's 740 right now. So we'll wrap things up at 8. Give you a good solid minute, 20 minutes to get some more pizza, have some more drinks, chat, ask questions. Thanks, everyone, for coming. We'll see you next month. Thank you.